Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today we're taking a look at the PD Movie Live Air 3 Smart. This is a wireless follow focus system with LADAR integration. So I've reviewed the Live Air 2. There'll be a card here if you want to check it out. And there I go in depth about what you can do with the wireless follow focus. Um, it's great. You have this thumb controller, which is very easy to mount. That's one of the things I really praise this new system. Uh, but now they are in integrating the LiDAR technology into the motor, which is great. It, it essentially turns your manual lenses into autofocus machines, right? Because what this is doing, here's a sensor, as you see there, it's pointing like an invisible, let's say a beam, and it's detecting what's in front of it, and it focuses on that. So it's very easy to set up. When you mount it to the rod, you wanna make sure that the sensor is close to the middle of the lens, either on the horizontal axis or on the vertical axis. That way it's also pointing to the middle, of what's in front, of, right in the middle of the lens. If it's, let's say, a little lower, because I have these rods with uh, my base plate can support rods. And if I connect this here, you see the center is towards the bottom of the lens. So it's actually pointing to what's on the bottom frame of the lens, which is not good. You want it to be in the center. So that's one of the things that's going to be the trickiest for you to set up this this um, this this motor is just getting it close to the center of the lens. So, you know, luckily I have mounting points and I have a part here from Nietzsche that uh, mounts to my cage. Also, that's another thing you might want to get a cage for your camera because it'll make it easier to mount the motor and get the lighter right in the center. So. That's one of the first things. Secondly, uh, make sure your manual focus lens has hard stops. Otherwise, this won't work for you. My favorite thing about the Live Air 3 Smart is that it doesn't need to be connected to a gimbal in order to work. Uh, I have the DJI RS3 Pro with the LiDAR and all that good stuff, all the bells and whistles that it needs to work. And it only works on the gimbal. If you take it off the gimbal, it doesn't work. The Live Air 3 doesn't need to be connected to a gimbal. It can work on a tripod, handheld, on a Dana Dolly. It can work on a gimbal as well. And there's no wires to run. It, it, it works independently. It only has this battery, which in a second I'll show you exactly. I'll walk you through the steps of setting it up. But it, it just opens up new possibilities. Uh, plus the price point, if you look compare the prices, uh, this is sitting around $500, give or take, depending on what package you get. Uh, where the LiDAR from the uh, RS3 Pro is way more pricier than that and you just need more things to go with it where this you don't need the gimbal to go with it you don't need um, the focus motor to go it's all integrated into this one piece right and as well if you if the lidar is not working for you you can always go to manual focus using the, the controller but in my experience it works out great even though the technology is different it's probably more basic I should say because the RS3 Pro's LiDAR DJI is a little bit more sophisticated. It has phase detection and all that stuff. But it doesn't mean that this won't give you really good results for basic stuff, which is essentially what I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of corporate stuff where um, I'm just maybe following a person, a subject, or just quickly getting a shot. And, and it's easy for me to set it up either on a gimbal or handheld and, and nail the focus. Also for like push ins with with a gimbal, it's much better than what I can do if I would try to pull focus with the focus wheel. So I prefer it to use it that way. So definitely great things about it. Let's quickly set up the Live Air 3 Smart. First, you wanna make sure nothing is blocking the LiDAR sensor. So you won't be able to use a map box because it gets in the way. This is why I use uh, threaded variable ND filters um, once you, you make sure everything's clear, then you insert the battery into the motor and then you see the light flashing. You can select the channel by double clicking. Essentially what you're doing is you're programming the lens to that color. Next, you hold on to the calibration button for three seconds and that sets the in and out points. Again, it's very important that you have uh, lenses that 
I have hard stops, otherwise this won't work. After that, you press the button one time, release, and then you press again for three seconds to enter the autofocus mode. Next thing you wanna do is set the focus chart. Uh, this one I printed uh, from PD Movie. They provided, and you wanna bring it as close to as possible, put the lens to the minimum focal distance, and you wanna bring the chart to focus. And you click once on the button of the motor. After that, you bring the chart back two feet. Again, set the focus, press on the button once. Once that's done, you move the chart again back five feet, set the focus and hit the button. And now it's ready to go. That lens is programmed to that light. The first lens I set up here, this is the IRX 15 mil. As you can see, it's doing a pretty good job as our subject here moves forward and back. I should note that the LiDAR detects movement up to four meters, four to five meters. And the angle of viewing on that sensor is about a 26 degree field of view. Now, for some reason, it doesn't perform as well in sunny, bright um, kind of scenes. So it does actually better indoors with more contrast. I'm not sure why, but this is what it is. Now moving up, this is the IRX 30 millimeter. And as you can see, it's struggling a little bit to keep up, but it's pretty decent. Again, uh, I'm trying to keep the subject in the center, doing a pretty good job of focusing. Now, when I move over to a handheld, you can see the 30 mil in sunny, bright uh, kind of scene. It's struggling a little bit. Um, so I've noticed that when I move indoors with the 30 mil, it does much better at keeping focus on the center subject. So. You can see there's a clear winner here going indoors versus outdoors. Now moving on to the 45, it does a much better job of tracking our subject as in they're moving forward and back. And that's because you have a, a narrower field of view. So it's easier to track the, 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 the subject in the middle frame. So it's doing a pretty good job going handheld. Again, it does really well outdoors for the most part. And, and then going indoors, handheld, it also performs really well. And that's a, it with our lenses. I did not go above uh, 50 mil because I noticed once you go to like 75, 85 millimeter lenses, it does a terrible job. It can't catch up because it's, it's too narrow a field of a view. And that's the limitation of this LiDAR motor. All right, let's keep in mind that I already programmed this lens. So I'm gonna pop in the battery. It'll automatically turn on. There's no on and off button. Bummer, just what it is. And so we'll give it a second. I already programmed this lens. It's set to the blue channel. You see here is the blue sticker that it comes with and it's included in, in the bag. And so to change channel, you double click. You see there, now that's white, red. So I already programmed different lenses to all these channels. So let's go to blue, there it is. And now I want to set the in and out points. I hold for three seconds on the button, on the calibration button. It's ready to go. So you see here, it's already doing its job. It's as easy as that. Now, if I want to switch over from autofocus as it is right now to manual focus, all I have to do is turn the controller to the nearest focal length or even turn a couple degrees. And now I'm back at manual focus. I'm controlling it here with the controller. Now, if I want to go back to autofocus, all I have to do is turn the wheel all over the way to the minimum focal distance, hold there, and it'll revert back to the autofocus, the LiDAR system. Also, there's three speeds to the autofocus. There's slow, medium, and high. And if you hold the button here, the calibration button for five seconds, it'll switch between the low, medium, and high autofocus. So this is what comes in the box. This is actually the nice bag that it comes with where you can, you know, put in everything. The, of course, the motor, the controller, you still get the hand unit. Oh, too many things. The hand unit, this is where you can put in the controller and use it as a hand unit, which is great. I've used this and it's worked out great. This is to mount it onto your camera. You're probably gonna need extra accessories or cage just to make sure you can mount it in the exact spot. That way you can get the sensor close to the middle of the lens. Uh, but this is a good starting point. Uh, you got two sets of batteries for both the controller and the motor, which is plenty. 
more than you'll need. And you have the chargers and cables for that. And you also, again, have this uh, gripping clamp to put it on a uh, on the handles of a, of a gimbal or on a tricky situation for the controller. So all that, there's the rod that it comes with as well. You also get the focus gears in case you your lenses don't have anything. You get the stickers in here. See that? That's for labeling your lenses when you, you calibrate them. And next time you know if it's a blue sticker like you see here, I already know to set it to the blue channel and I'm ready to go. I don't have to do the, the calibration again. So overall, I gotta say, this is a great little unit for the price. I mean, I'm impressed by the results. It could definitely do a better job with uh, focusing than I can for certain things like pushing in, uh, following a person into, into the shot, uh, being on a gimbal if I'm grabbing quick shots and I have manual focus lenses, I definitely see myself using it. Um, I, I think it's awesome and it just does opens up different possibilities. Let's say I'm, I'm on a Dana Dolly, stuff like that. I would definitely trust it for uh, corporate shoots. If I need more control, obviously this is not what you'd want to use. You want to use something very much more sophisticated, going with uh, action, that actual focus puller and that kind of stuff. But for basic uh, videography or corporate jobs, uh, I think this is something you I, I would definitely rely on. So let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.